It's midday, live from Oakland Park in Johannesburg. This is The Agenda on SABC News. I'm Sim Piwen Gong, and thank you so much for joining us. Defence Minister Nosivio Mapisa Ngakula has 48 hours to submit a report explaining why she shared a flight to Zimbabwe with an ANC delegation. The senior ruling party officials flew on an Air Force jet with the minister to meet ZANU-PF in Harare on Wednesday. President Cyril Ramaphosa would like the report to explain the circumstances which led to the ANC officials being given a lift, which must include flight and passenger details. When visuals surfaced of the delegation arriving in Harare on the Air Force jet, social media erupted with criticism and scrutiny over the use of a state aircraft. Ramaphosa says Mapisa Makula had permission to travel to Zimbabwe to meet her counterpart. When the delegation returned to South Africa, ANC spokesperson Dakota Lekwete was asked about the use of the Air Force jet. On matters of national interest, on matters of common purpose, wherein as South Africa we sit in a situation where over 3 million Zimbabweans have crossed the border to our shores to seek greener pastures, and that in itself has agitated some among South African people, which we have a possibility of some reckless xenophobic attacks. It warrants on us as leaders to go beyond the point of reach or beyond the point of call. And as a result of that, uh, those in authorities were going to Zimbabwe on official capacity we happened to find an opportunity after our envoy went there first but it was important that as the african national congress we go there on a party-to-party -party relations to explain to our counterparts to explain to our comrades who are the governing party there the zanu pf to understand that it's important for them to internalize and appreciate the fact that we need to work towards resolving these problems because it is creating uncertainty, it's creating instability in the region because throughout the SADC region, Zimbabweans are all over to seek greener pastures and as South Africa we are suffering the most. And as a result of that, we will not hide it, we have to be candid, forthright, upfront to engage them. And that's how it happened. And to unpack these developments, we are joined by Lebohang Peko, a senior research fellow at the Trade Collective. Lebohang, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the agenda. Hi, Lebohang, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the agenda. Me? Yes, I can hear you now. Now, uh, first of all, Thank these you. latest developments, uh, Lebohang, to what degree or to what extent do they suggest the blurring of lines between government and political party lines? Well, this is, this is not a new conversation. So if we appreciate that um, there have been in the past, you know, comments around country first versus party first, this really is a continuation of the kind of trajectory which suggests that these blurring of lines is not only about um, this incident, it's also about the organs of state where there's sometimes a lack of distinction in some of the policy articulations and pronouncements of some ANC members and senior officials uh, between what is the a government position, a state of position, a, an executive position, an NEC position, and a party political position. And I think that we can appreciate that there's a huge distinction between a government per se, a party per se, and that the, the functions and the powers of either uh, should be and remain entirely distinct from each other. Now, is it uh, perhaps justifiable to presume that public funds could have been abused in this instance? I'm not at liberty to comment, but I do certainly think that it's, it's, it's problematic that, um, uh, you know, that the parties involved, the individuals involved, have not really, don't seem to be sensitive to the public perception of this. And, and as you say, if there's a perception that funds, public funds could have been used for what is essentially a party political assignment, there has to be some form of transparent accountability and a way in which perhaps we understand where, this, where, where these funds came from. We also have to remember that the state is not a funnel for party political activities and that the incumbent party, because of its huge reach as a governing majority, 
has to be subjected to the sort of scrutiny and, 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 and intimate scrutiny, in fact, financial scrutiny, as any other movement or as any other party that has a parliamentary presence, which would include them trying to then um, declare its, where it has gotten its own, its own income. And that's a very important conversation right now in the context as well of party political elections, party political funds, housing, lifestyle audits. It is linked to the whole lack of paucity and the whole, you know, the whole lack of probity, I should say, and the whole lack of transparency around how individuals within parties and parties as organizations are able to sustain themselves. You know, Le Bohang, the, the, the water kloof air base is once again central in this debacle. Just how reminiscent is this to the controversial Gupta lending? I think it's slightly distinct, if I may say, because, I mean, that, that was, uh, the, the controversies around that were also that these were not only, this was not only a private landing, but also that the individuals who landed were not per se officials in any way, um, party officials or state officials, um, and also that they were not nationals. Uh, although it does turn out that the, the, the Gupta family had um, been fast-forwarded to citizenship, which has since not been, that's either been revoked or not been renewed. But I do think that there's a slight distinction between the two. I do, however, hope that we are going to be able in future uh, and in the present not to, 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 to get away from these unnecessary controversies. And I wonder why the ANC as a governing party uh, keeps on scoring these own goals and thinking that the, that the public at large is perhaps unwilling or unable to hold them account. I also think that it's really important to appreciate that at a time such as this, where we are really grappling with uh, the, the contradictions that the coronavirus has presented us with, uh, money that have not been dispersed. Um, 500 billion COVID fund, which hasn't been dispersed efficiently. I really think that this is a moment for, uh, uh, again, the ANC to consider its role as a party that is incumbent and what that leadership role actually looks like. What is the texture, the currency of that? Does it inspire confidence? Um, or does it, is it constantly being distracted by these um, strange on on goal and these sort of slightly blurry, nebulous moments of, um, of, of really poor judgment. Now, the international flights are currently restricted under lockdown level two. So uh, what kind of impression does this particular trip give to the public who are not allowed to travel internationally? I think I've already said, I mean, the, the notion of leadership, the notion that there's a, you know, there are contradictions, that people are already having a difficult time during the coronavirus. And I think there's actually given us the opportunity to be much more observant and to introspect even more. I think South Africans as a whole, we are very um, conscientized and very engaged citizens. Uh, and I don't think that this is the moment at any, well, it's never the right time to behave as though a party is above the interests and is above the suffering and the struggle of the general population, never more so than now. Okay, Le Bohang Peko, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your analysis of this matter. Thank you. That, that was Le Bohang Peko, a, research, uh, a senior research fellow at the Trade Collective.